will the Niners regret letting Eric Armstead leave? No. No. He's just, I'm really banking on, I think he's, I think his body's breaking down. This is, this is a concern. Like I'm, I, I specifically remember this article I wrote like two years ago, like 49ers concerns, of Eric Armstead going into the season. And then even this season, again, body breaking down, still a hell of a player when he's available, <laughs> when he's available, if healthy, if those always follow after, then hell yeah. It made sense why the 49ers wanted to cut uh trim off a little bit of his salary honestly a little bit i if when i heard that it's like okay maybe he would take it he's made over 50 80 million in his career maybe he does it they'll still get paid a little bit amount um but no he banked on himself and sure enough he's getting paid he's gonna pay the same honestly he's probably getting paid more now i know he's getting paid one million dollar less but no state income tax he's, I think he's making more now right at least, at least or close to it close to it yeah maybe so I, I think it makes sense because the 49ers, like, look, they couldn't, they couldn't like stomach that number. I'm just a little shocked that they were still okay with that dead money because I remember, like, after like Super Bowl is over, you start thinking, like, okay, what are players that they can move off of? Because salary cap, you know, they were kind of in salary cap hell, right? They were, they were above the limit going to free agency. Who's the number one player they can get rid of? In my head, Eric Armstead. Who, who the hell wants to take him when he's always hurt? And that, that number made no right. sense. And of course, you're not going to, yeah. we make the same case of like, oh, Trey Dubas, Samuel. Well, you know what? You can't because dead cape hat. But they just did it with Eric Armstead. So I think now we can actually still talk about what uh, players being gone with that dead cap hit. But Armstead, like, I just think banking on his availability, really. Okay, okay. But here's the thing, though. Let's say what's interesting about it is the Niners are betting against him staying healthy. The Jaguars are betting on him staying healthy. Now it's Trent Baalke, and he gets a little over eager with these that's his pick these too. players. So I'm pretty sure he feels a little ego. Like, yeah, that's my pick. I'm going to bring him out. Like, you see that, guys? That was a hit. You know these coaches and GMs be thinking like that, like oh he was a hit. I can add him. I can add that little Armstead trophy to my shelf about how many players I've drafted. I'm sure it's the eagle things a little attached to them. Yeah, the I would coach. imagine. Um, so if he plays and stays healthy, the Niners are going to regret letting him go, unless they're going to create a bunch of cap space after June one. If they use that on something to make the team better, then that changes the equation. But I think what's rough about the way they got rid of Armstead is you re you restructured his contract last year and put yourself in a position this year where you don't really get anything, any savings that you can use by cutting him. So you you, you found savings other ways and you brought guys in, but you haven't made any like big time moves. You lost a big time player one healthy. You haven't made any big time moves. If he goes to Jacksonville and stays healthy, you, you're going to feel stupid. Or maybe not stupid, but you're just going to feel like that sucks. Dang. That sucks. Because, so, yeah, they're pretty much making a – they're pretty much rolling the dice saying, look, we think you're a fine player, but your arrow's not pointing up. There's a chance you're going to get worse, and your body's getting worse. Yeah. So that's why they rolled the dice and said, hey, we want to take a pay cut, or you can leave. Yeah. And they probably felt confident that he would take a pay cut, you know, because he's pretty much not full-time starter material in terms of health anymore, it feels like. Yeah, and so who who do I think's right on this one? The 49ers for, for exercising caution with a player who's been mostly injured the last two years or Trent Balky. <laughs> I guess I got to give the Niners the benefit of the doubt on this one. High risk. He's, he's, he's coming off a torn meniscus surgery. Yeah. I got to give the Niners the benefit that. of the doubt on this one. It's just too bad that like they restructured him last year. I could have told him that was a bad idea. That is like, he had yeah, plantar fasciitis at that point. Especially because he had plantar fasciitis, the broken foot, and the other thing. It's like, Jesus, man, this guy's got bad luck. That's a red yeah. flag. Like, is he going to start getting bad luck? He's getting up there in age, you know? Which is kind of funny. Like, his career's coming, kind of coming full circle. The first three years, always injured. Then he had, like, a tremendous every game for, like, what, another four years? And now it's, like, back to, well, now he can't stay healthy again. That's a circle of life in the NFL. Sorry. <laughs>